Let's start by taking a quick overview of the 2600. Starting with the oscillator section, we get three of these oscillators, voltage controlled oscillators. Now they're pretty much identical, except for the waveform outputs you get on each, and also some of the normal connections at the bottom over here. But mostly they're pretty much identical. Three voltage controlled oscillators. Then the three sound generators are sent in through the voltage control filter slash resonator or VCF. Over here we get to choose which of each signal we want to route through the filter. So with the sliders down right now nothing is going through the filter. But there are some normal connections. So for example on this slider I'm bringing in VCO1, specifically the pulse wave output as it's indicated over here. So the pulse wave on VCO1 is normaled here on this slider and goes in through the filter. Now if I send the synth some MIDI, we're hearing this VCO1's pulse wave output going in through the filter. Alright, so that's how some of the normal connection works. So there are five different audio inputs and three different control inputs normal to the filter. Then the audio is routed to the VCA section over here, the voltage control amplifier. The VCA has two inputs. On this first one, it's receiving the signal from the filter. If I bring this on, you don't hear anything. But if I bring it back up, you're hearing the signal. The VCA also has two control inputs. One is an AR envelope, which is over here, an attack release envelope. And then we also have an EDSR control signal, which is over here. Right now with this slider up, we're using the AR envelope to control the VCA. And then finally, the signal is routed to the mixer. There are two inputs on the mixer. So you can see here, the filter can go directly into the mixer. Or you can send in the VCA signal. If I bring this up, so now the signal from the VCA, which we've already set up, is being routed through the mixer. Let's listen to the VCF directly. You will notice that the sound drones along, and that is because there is no control for the VCF, or at least it has not been set up yet. We have set up the control for the VCA, so if you listen to the VCA, that can be controlled with the ADSR as I play in different MIDI notes. At the end here, we can mix in some reverberated signal along with the mixer. So this is running parallel to the signal that's coming in from the mixer. And then right at the end, we have a panner, so you can choose to pan the entire signal to the left or to the right. It is center indented, so you know exactly when it's sitting in the center. So that is the main audio signal path for the 2600, but we can introduce other elements into the sound. For example, over here, we can introduce portamento into the pitch. So if I turn this on, we can hear the gliding effect on the notes. There's an LFO over here. Now these oscillators can also run in LFO mode by just switching this switch to the lower position. But if you do not want to do that, we have a dedicated LFO over here that can be used to modulate anything. Next we have a preamp here, which can be used to bring in external signals and use it to maybe modulate anything on the 2600. Or we can even take the output of the synth, route it back into itself using this preamp to create like a feedback effect. Next we have an envelope follower. So if you feed any signal to it, it'll follow the amplitude changes, generate a controlled signal, and then you can use it to modulate anything. This is the ring mod section. So you can multiply two signals and hear the output of that through this. By default, it's getting VCO1 and VCO2 in its inputs. And that is normal to the filter on this input over here. So if I bring this slider up, we will hear the ring modulated sound. This is a noise generator. So we have a level control and also a color control. The noise is also normal to the filter on this input over here. So if I bring the slider up and play notes on the keyboard, you will hear the noise generator. Next is the voltage processor section. This can be very helpful to process signals and manipulate them in various ways. So we get four separate voltage processors here in this section. We will check this out later on. Next we have the sample and hold module over here. It has an internal clock. You can see here I can adjust the rate for it. And again we can use this to modulate a variety of different things on the synth. The sample and hold can also trigger the envelope. There's a switch over here for that. So if I turn that on, even without sending in any MIDI data to the synth, it just automatically triggers the envelope. 
And then lastly, we have an electronic switch over here. So this has multiple purposes, but one purpose could be you can feed in two signals and alternate between the two signals with the output over here on C. Not related to the synthesis engine, but there's power on off, headphone volume control, and the headphone output here. But of course, there's also the main output up top here. So that's a quick overview of the 2600. In the coming tutorials, we'll dive deeper into individual components.